Hello, this is going to be a walkthrough of the Gaussian blur UI effect. Um, this is a shader graph that allows us to not only have a Gaussian blur, but have it fade in certain places of the screen. So um, we'll go to our first part here. This is our input texture. We can have a custom input texture, but our default one is the camera opaque texture. This is a texture that's given to us by Unity, and it's it's created before um, the transparency. So if you need transparency uh, calculated within the blur, you're going to want to pass in a render texture. And of course, this Boolean here controls which one um, it's going to use. We have a UI image here. This UI image, we're going to use how um, we're going to use the colors here to determine how much blur we're going to have on each particular spot of our screen. And then we're, we have a sampler state. This shows um, how we're going to sample the textures. We have our screen position. So this maps the screen position to our textures. And so if we wanted distortion, we're going to edit it between here and here. And then as long as you pass in a vector four, you'll be able to um, uh, distort the image if you want to. We have a screen position which just takes the width and the height, turns it into a vector two, and feeds it into our custom function. We have a blur scale uh, that gets processed through a custom function. And what that happens is we have our, the output of this is our iterations and our kernel. The iterations is how many loops we do. And if we do too many loops, it's going to uh, drastically diminish our frames per second. We don't want that. So what we do is we have a kernel. And the kernel is like a power function. So if we increase the kernel, we can use less iterations um, to get the same amount of blur. That being said, after our custom function, which uh, renders out our blur, we can um, have it lighter, we can adjust the tint and the saturation, and then we can output our to our sprite. And that's how the Gaussian blur UI effect works.